Hi! Perhaps you know this guy. This is the famous mixed martial arts fighter, Yuri Boyka. He just got out of one of the most daunting prisons in Russia and is ready to conquer the world of mixed martial arts. But even in a nightmare, he can't imagine what he'll have to go through on the path to world fame. Yuri Boyka lives, does training, and performs in Kyiv. He has 10 years in strict regime colony and hundreds of underground brawls in which he participated to free himself. If someone else was in his shoes, they would have given up on their dreams a long time ago. But Yuri didn't. He dreams of a real, not prison titles. Meanwhile, in the Black Hills, where the fighters once served and fought, a new star appears. A mad prisoner named Nightmare. One day, between fights, Boyka goes to give donations to the local church. Actually, the church was built on his budget. The fighter tries to find a salvation in the religion. However, the Holy Father doubts his life path. But if it's salvation you seek, violence is not the answer. Boyka objects him. He believes that the Almighty gave him a unique gift, and it would be a sin on his part not to use it. Therefore, his heart calm, he keeps training, and soon learns from his manager, Kirill, that he has found a fight opportunity for him. And it's not some kind of underground fight, but a real eligibility fight, which can give him a ticket to the International European Mixed Martial Arts Championship. With his manager as his companion, Yuri goes to Budapest. Boyka's eyes are on a sweeping victory, especially since the first row of the arena are filled with scouts who select the best athletes for further cooperation. The brawl begins. From the very first seconds, it becomes clear that Yuri's opponent is a fairly strong athlete. Boyka barely manages to dodge his skillful punches, and a couple of times he almost gets hit. But the insistence of the opponent angers Yuri so much he goes all in and strikes dangerous blows to the chest and head. The opponent loses his mouth guard and barely stands up to his feet. Boyka even struts and swaggers in front of the audience and celebrates the victory. But the opponent rises up after all. That's when all of Yuri's rage hits him like a ton of bricks. Boyka triumphs. After the fight, the scouts approach him and say they haven't seen such an impressive fight in a long time. The men want to see Boyka again in Budapest and offer him to join the new tournament in two weeks. Yuri promptly agrees and later receives a fee from Kirill's hands from the recent victory. Leaving the arena, Boyka sees his opponent as being taken somewhere on a gurney. He's informed that the guy is in critical condition and will go to the intensive care unit. Yuri's seriously concerned. He immediately remembers the words the priest had said a couple of days before the fight. The next morning, he wakes up from a nightmare and goes straight to the training room where Kirill is sitting. Boyka starts asking him what happened to yesterday's opponent. The manager doesn't understand why Yuri needs this information. He won anyway. But in the end, he tells the truth. He's dead. Yuri can't believe it's probable. He asks Kirill the opponent's name. That guy is actually Victor from Dravny, the town in Russia. The manager advises the fighter to forget about it and move on. Anyway, all fighters perfectly understand the risks when they enter the ring. But Boyka doesn't even want to follow his advice. After seeing the photo of Victor and his wife, he firmly decides to go to Russia and redeem himself. He isn't even intimidated by the fact that in Russia, he's a fugitive criminal who got out of prison thanks to underground fights. Yuri orders his assistant to produce fake documents for him, and he makes it very clear that he will not accept refusal. While Boyka reaches the neighboring country, Victor's funeral is being held in the small town of Dravny. A suspicious man approaches the window of the fighter. He cynically informs the woman that the death of her husband does not change the payment of certain debt, and now the widow is obliged to work it off. I can make things easier for you. Yuri, meanwhile, crosses the Russian border with a fake passport. He checks into a hotel and goes straight to the Children's and Youth Center where Victor's widow works. But they don't have time for a word. People come for the girl in a black car and take her somewhere. Boyka extracts information from the local security guard in a threatening manner, and he learns that the widow was taken to some mysterious second job. Yuri goes to the address and discovers that it's a nightclub where mixed martial arts fights take place in the evening. Boyka stands in the doorway and watches the fight of the club's undefeated champion, Igor Kazmir. Yuri is infuriated by the smug behavior of the fighter. The fighter is sure that the ring belongs to him and uses dirty tricks against opponents. But then he gets distracted by something else. He sees Victor's widow working here as a waitress. What are you? Are you following me? But Yuri doesn't have time to talk to the widow. He's immediately noticed by a security guard and taken outside. 
They say that the girl belongs to their boss, and Boyka has no right to approach her. The guards provoke the fighter, and in a few moments, Boyka puts the bouncers on the ground like bags of potatoes. The same suspicious man comes out of the opposite building and introduces himself as Zurab. He applauds Yuri for the show he has just put on and informs him that the club belongs to him. The local crime boss even offers Yuri a place in the ring, but the latter turns down the offer. He says he's here to talk to Alma, the waitress, and then Zurab resolutely refuses and orders his guys to keep an eye on Yuri. But the threats of local bandits don't frighten Boyka. The next day, he comes back to Alma's place of work, and after hitting the henchman of Zurab, goes inside. At first, he hesitates to tell the widow the truth, only expressing his condolences and giving Alma a letter from her deceased husband. But when the girl starts asking where they know each other from, he spills it out. It was me. I was the one in the ring in Kiev. Yuri asks if there's anything he can do for Alma. She replies that the only thing she needs is her husband back from the dead. She rejects the money offered by Boyka, saying it's filthy with blood and calling him a murderer. Meanwhile, a portion of young meat, new fighters, is being brought to Zurab's club. But the mafia guy does not like them. He's in search of a real champion who'd like to turn local fights into real shows. And he doesn't have to wait long. Yuri appears on the doorstep of the club. Boyka offers Zurab a deal. He fights in his ring, and the mobster leaves Alma alone forever. The guy agrees three matches, but on the condition that Boyka will fight with the main champion of the club. Yuri agrees and says that he'll hold all three fights in the next week because he does not intend to stay here. There's only one problem. Zurab calls aloud Boyka's real name, demonstrating that he can't escape his ubiquitous bloodhounds even with false documents. My arena. My rules. After the conversation at the club, Yuri calls Kirill and says that he will need to stay for another week. The manager tries to dissuade him, but Boyka is adamant. He orders the assistant to change the ticket for another date. The next day, Alma's waiting for Yuri outside the hotel. She's infuriatingly telling the fighter that she didn't ask for his help and demands him to leave her alone. Victor's widow mistakenly believes that Boyka has come here to win her over, like some kind of prize. But the fighter makes it clear that he's not interested in her. He came not to redeem the girl, but to redeem himself. The day of the first match comes. While the opponents are preparing for the fight, Zurab is happily watching everything from the VIP box. Yuri's opponent turns out to be stronger than expected, but Boyka quickly pulls himself together and actively presses him. In the end, he puts the opponent on his shoulder blades, grabs him by the throat, and... While he rests after the fight, Alma brings him water. Yuri asks the girl if there's a gym nearby, because he doesn't want to go to Zurab's gym. An audience is obnoxious there. Alma says that he can come train at her workplace. The next day, Yuri goes to the Children and Youth Center and works out where Victor once prepared for competitions. The hour of the second match arrives. The host announces that Yuri Boyka, already known to the audience, will fight against local celebrities, the Ozarov brothers. Consequently, Yuri learns that he'll have to fight against two people, which, of course, he was not warned about. Or rather, in a sense. My arena, my rules. It takes a while for Yuri to get his bearings in the match against two people, but he quickly takes the initiative and puts both brothers on his shoulder blades in turn. However, the battle continues. As soon as Boyka deals with one Ozerov, the second one is already right there. At some point, one of the opponents severely injures Yuri's lower back, and he barely manages to find the strength to keep going. But Boyka catches a glimpse of Alma's face, and manages to knock out both opponents with the last spurt of will. Yuri walks out of the ring, limping. The entire audience chants his name, and Victor's wife seems to look at him with completely different eyes. A new day is coming. Zurab receives a policeman in his office, from whom he demands to deliver Nightmare to him from the Black Hills prison. The policeman initially refuses, because the last time he almost lost his job because of a similar adventure. However, Zurab has an ace up his sleeve. He says that the lieutenant will not only get money, but also a fugitive criminal. Yuri Boyka. Still not knowing what lies ahead, Boyka goes to train immediately after the fight. Alma visits the fighter during the class and offers to apply a special decoction on his back. But when Yuri asks why she doesn't leave the city, the woman gets offended and drops what she's doing halfway. According to Alma, this center is the biggest dream of her and her late husband, for which they borrowed money from the treacherous Zura. 
Leaving this center and the children who go there would be complete madness for her part. After learning that Boyka regularly goes to Alma's workplace, Zura becomes jealous. He comes to her and begins to turn the woman against Yuri. It was an accident. Was it truly an accident? Kiro calls Yuri again and says that the whole of Budapest is covered with posters with his name. He's expected to join the competitions as soon as possible. Boyka promises him that he'll be at the bus stop at 9 o'clock that evening, and when he returns to the hotel, he meets an uninvited guest there. Alma wants to find out the whole truth about what happened on that fateful day. She's ready to hear the truth, whether it was an accident or not, so Boyka tells his story. He says that he did terrible things, for which he went to jail for for a very long time. I was an evil man, full of hatred, until I found God. Hundreds of times, Yuri fought in the dirtiest arenas of the most abominable prisons. And so, when God finally gave him a chance to prove to the whole world that he was worth something, Yuri stopped seeing a person in the ring in front of him. For him, Victor was only an obstacle on his way to his most cherished dream. Yuri knows all of this is not enough to make up for the loss of Alma, but he regrets what he did with all of his heart. Boyka finally enters the ring against his main opponent. Igor Kazmir. There's a fierce fight, during which they go neck and neck, but the opponent is playing a very dirty game. He inflicts even more injury on Yuri's already sore lower back, and is not even averse to throwing blows at the groin. Boyka almost gives up, and Kazmir is already beginning to celebrate the victory, finishing off the lying man's back with his hands. But Yuri catches Alma's eyes in the crowd again and gets to his feet with renewed vigor. He becomes ferocious and deals a series of devastating blows to the enemy's vulnerable points. Kazmir is disoriented, and Boyka can easily knock him out with a powerful kick. Boyka leaves the ring surrounded by fans. He thinks that the job is done, so he can go to Budapest for the competition of his dreams. But Zurab has other plans. He pretends to be a fool and says that they agreed on three fights and a battle with the champion. And Kazmir is not the champion, just a local clown. Yuri is furious at this deception, but he's given an ultimatum. Either he enters the ring again, or Alma forever remains the property of Zurab. Bring me your champion. They announce the main fight of the evening. Victorious Yuri against a thug newcomer from prison. Boyka sees his opponent and can't believe his eyes. The nightmare is twice as big as him. Alma, whom Zurab has set next to him in the VIP box, is also very concerned. The brawl begins. In the first minute, Yuri loses his mouth guard and falls backwards. Everyone thinks he's knocked out because they're already celebrating Nightmare's victory, but Boyka still regains consciousness. He has a few more seconds to get up and continue the fight. He sees Alma worried and Zurab laughing and collecting his last remaining strength. Boyka's injured lower back is hit several times. Nevertheless, he continues to fight, overcoming the pain but his opponent is noticeably exhausted and also begins to give up. Yuri pushes on Nightmare with blows to the chest, ground fights with him, and applies a painful technique, and then... Boyka rejoices, not even suspecting that guys with bats are already waiting for him at the exit. At the last moment, he notices that Zurab roughly grabs Alma and drags her somewhere from the VIP box, but Yuri doesn't have time to stop the villain because Zurab's guards start beating him. Victor's widow sees Boyka's body before leaving and screams, thinking that he's dead. The people run out of the club in a panic, thinking that a raid has begun. However, they fail to hand Yuri over to the police. He gets up, knocks out all the guys with bats, and gets shot by another mafia guard. Zurab hears a shot from his office, picks up a gun, and starts running out of the club with Alma under his arm. On the way, he exchanges fire with Yuri, inflicts several more wounds on him, and almost reaches the car. But Boyka is faster. Alma and Yuri are left alone. She says that Boyka urgently needs to see the doctor, but he won't even listen to her. Yuri admits that before he didn't have the heart to ask. But now, he asks for her forgiveness. Without hearing the cherished words, Boyka surrenders to the police. Now, Yuri's back in the Black Hills. Six months later, Alma visits him for the first time. She apologizes for not arriving earlier. She wasn't ready. At the beginning of their acquaintance, Alma was too angry with Yuri, but he showed her that they're still good in the world. Victor's widow thanks Boyka for restoring her freedom and dignity, and finally utters the most long-awaited phrase. I forgive you. 
This is where Yuri Boyka's misadventure ends. The creators of the franchise promised a series, but we've yet to see it. Leave a comment down below with your theories about what's gonna happen to the hero next. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're gonna show you even more good movies.